Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss, and today I have a follow-up video for you. Back at the end of July 2022, I did a video where I was talking about this book right here, Watercolor Flowers by Sarah Berenson, and I had challenged myself to paint every flower, all 50 flowers, to give myself some really good practice. So today we're going to flip through my sketchbook, look at all 50 flowers because I did it, I completed it in less than 30 days, and we're gonna talk about what's next. And this whole process right here inspired me to buy a new product so we're going to look at that too that's in this box right here it's a brand new set of watercolor brushes these beautiful brushes were created as a collaboration with Lindsay the frugal crafter if you've been around this channel at all you know that Lindsay is my watercolor guru so when I heard that she had created her own line of brushes I had to have them so we'll talk about the price of these why I decided to get them and a less expensive alternative if you would like to get into water coloring so let's start by checking out my 50 flowers that I created in less than 30 days so if you watched my previous video you know that I have been working this year on getting better at practicing I want to have a passion for practice and so that's why I picked up this book it seemed like a very strong structured way to get me practicing something that I want to get better at. So the book is set up so that in the very beginning of the book there's all these basic watercolor instructions and things to try. And then the majority of the book goes into these quick lessons where they show you a sketch and how to paint this particular flower. And there's 50 different flowers that I got to try. And I have to tell you, it was a lot of fun, but there were parts where I was just like ready to give up, but I persevered, and we'll talk about that a little bit here at the end. This is the book that I was working in. It's an Arteza watercolor book. It has a nice linen canvasy type cover, and I like it because it feels very um, official. When I'm doing my practice, I want to feel like this is a special place for me to spend time doing my art. So there, I already flipped through the beginning of this book in the last video, so I won't do that. We're going to skip ahead to where I started with my flowers. So right here is where the flowers began. And what I'm excited to show you is the first four flowers compared to, say, the last four flowers and see the difference in my skill. And I feel like I really progressed. The other thing I did during this experiment so I was looking at the book and I loved how up in the corners of the book there's this really fun, loose watercolor wash. And I thought I would try practicing that as well during this um, practice session. So all of my flowers have the name written down, what the name means, what the flower means. And then at the end of my um, painting over here, I would create a fun kind of wash, usually some spritzing speckles on there as well. And then after this dried, I wrote down some notes so that I could learn as I go. So I created myself a really structured way to go through this book. I painted it, I wrote out the name, and then I did the wash, and then I wrote notes, things I wish I had done better, things that I like about the flower. So I really enjoyed having that structure. And some of these washes turned out so fun. And these, this pen here that I used to write the names is a calligraphy pen by Elegant Writer. And it has a really unique water, it's not water resistant, water activated ink. When it gets wet, it releases all these really cool colors. You get greens, blues, pinks, they all come out of this ink. So I thought that was a really fun way to incorporate the name in with the watercolor wash. All right, I'm gonna take my face off of here and we're going to flip through this. All right, I think I've got the camera fixed a little bit better so we can see the full spread here of all four flowers. So I did two flowers per page and um, I already explained to you my process 
So let's go ahead and I'll just thumb through here. Some of them, like I said, <laughs> some of them it was me practicing and learning and it didn't end up as good as I wanted it to. Like this one I said, this was hard. I love the colors. The shapes aren't quite right. <laughs> Others turned out really good, really loose and pretty. Again, this one was really hard because it was some wet on um, wet washes and you're trying to keep all the individual petals separate, but I learned a lot here. Love how that one turned out. So soft and pretty. I want to paint more of those. Oh, this was a little experiment I did. I had watched a YouTube video where she creates these loose flowers with just drops of paint. So I called them dot flowers and I just had some fun practicing the dot flowers on this page. Here we have a California poppy that the colors kind of went funky on it. <laughs> a camellia. Look at how pretty these little cherry blossoms are. I love the thin branches. I discovered as I went along that I prefer a very thin branch or stem compared to a thicker one. I think it looks really um, elegant when it's really thin. See the difference here with the thin versus a thick over here on the daffodil. Love the daffodil, but the details, I really struggled with the details on a lot of these and I think it's the brushes. That's what I'm hoping. I know I need to practice more, but I think a different brush is going to help me. I love that we got to do a fall wreath, although I, this leaf right here is really sad, <laughs> but that's all right. This one was really hard too. This one took a lot of time, but I'm pleased with how it turned out. It feels a little forced, but other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. Love the fuchsia, how the fuchsia turned out. I want to practice these flowers some more too. I think they're just so delicate and pretty. The hydrangea I was okay with. It was lots of fun, but I think, again, I wish that the little details were smaller. So I think a different brush is what's needed. Again, same issue with the lilacs and the lavender. I was starting to get better details here on the iris. Some better fine lines. I felt more in control of it. So pretty. This one, the peony, I don't think it really turned out much like a peony, but it's still pretty. I like it. <laughs> this one, I don't even know what this flower is. This is called a passion flower. I haven't looked it up yet, but I just followed her instructions um, and it's, it's interesting. <laughs> but love the Peruvian lily. Look how the details are starting to get better. It feels loose and relaxed. Oh, well, thank I like that you. pansy too. Well, the pansy, yeah, it turned out. I think it's one of my favorites. <laughs> decent. Oh, they're just so happy and they like have a face on them. Mm, something about it. That's cool. Yeah. I wish this one had turned out better. I had a hard time with the plumeria, but I love the prickly pear. I love how the colors did a wet on wet gradient type feeling in here and the cactus part. So fun. Yeah. A lot of these flowers I think could really um, benefit from some black outlines to make the details oh, pop yeah. better. But that wasn't what we were learning here. It was not line work, it was flowers. Again, I really like the roses. I like the ranunculus. I think that's how you call these ones here. And the sea holly was lots of fun too. I don't like how this one turned out up here, but that's all right. I learned stuff as I did it. Sea holly's cool. Yeah, yeah this one was fun. Right. And I was starting to get more delicate details again. Again, that's where I really struggled, I think. The tiger lily, I think it looks good. It could have been better. Some of the, le like this petal looks a little awkward, but anyway, I'm just being picky. The thistle, I ended up using a fan brush to do the Oh, the, I was gonna say, I love part. the strokes on that. Yeah, it turned out better using that brush. This is when I started to think, maybe I need to try different brushes. That's, this experience here really made me think I need new brushes. 
this water lily and this winter wreath, I did some outlining on both of them. So that's it. That's all 50 flowers. Can you believe it? And like I said, I, I did it in less than a month. I was so proud of that. And then over here on this spread, I took some time. I put 50 flowers. What did I learn? And I wrote down a whole bunch of things that I learned as I went through this process. The very last thing I wrote here is I am looking forward to the next book, which I'm going to show you the next one I'm going to do is also by Sarah Berenson and it's this book right here I can't wait it's called watercolor the easy way and again it has 50 things I get to paint inside this book look at all the different things cats animals, feathers, flowers, um, bugs, ice cream, all kinds of really fun things I get to paint. And I've already prepped a new book for me. This is another one of those Arteza canvas books, but I wanted to make it feel a little special and different from this book, which has just the plain cover. So I used some of the Dilutions um, sprays, a shimmer spray. Let me show you what that product looks like. This is it here. I used some of the spray and spritzed it across the front of the book and onto the spine. And then I also spritzed this part of the book so that it had a really pretty green finish. And then I did the very first cover the interior here, putting the same um, phrase that I'm working on this year, develop a passion for practice, art every day. And then I just doodled some little ivy leaves along the edges, but look at the shine on those dilution sprays. I'll put a link to the dilution sprays if you're interested. They're really messy, but really fun. And on the linen, the shine isn't as evident, but I kind of like that. It has a much more subtle feel to it, and I really love that look. So I'm all ready to get started here using my new book. I'm going to do the same process, try to get through this book in 30 days, and that should give me another really good push towards learning how to watercolor better. Let me show you real quick again the before the 30 days and the after the 30 days. So if we flip to the very first four page spread right here, you can see how the details are really not there. <laughs> And I'm really struggling with getting fine lines and getting my shapes correct and making them feel organic and loose. But by the end of the 50 days, things are much looser. Things, the little details are so much better. I'm getting way better at these flowers as I reached the end of the 50 flower challenge. So, one of the things, like I said, that I learned is that I need help with the small little details. And I think it has to do with the kind of brushes I am using. So let me show you the brushes that I currently have. And I really like them. Um, I used Paul Rubin's paint in all of it, so it's not the best, best quality paint ever, but it's not a cheap brand either. It's a really good line of paints. This set right here costs about $40 right now on Amazon, and you get it in a nice tin, and they had a really good variety of colors for everything I was doing. And then I have my brushes, and this set right here, minus the fan, this set right here is called the Creative Mark Mimic Watercolor Brush Set. I'm going to put a link to it. You get all of these brushes for $30 and it gives you a really good variety. You've got rounds, you've got flats, and some really small detail type brushes too. And this brush right here, this number eight, and this brush right here, this number 12, were the main ones that I used in my 30 day 50 flower challenge. So I really liked them, but I felt like I couldn't get the details I wanted and I happened to be watching Lindsay the Frugal Crafters channel and she mentioned that she had created a line of brushes and I was like maybe this is my answer so I went on to the website and I ordered it here is the website right here it's craftammo.com this was a limited run of brushes so I'm not sure if they are still available I paid $60 for my set um, I'm not sponsored I used my own money to purchase 
purchase this. It comes in a really nice box with a magnet closure on it. And then inside are the brushes. Aren't they pretty? There's two different bristle types. There's the Taclon and there's the... Um, squirrel as well and I get a couple new brushes that are supposed to be really good for details this one here is called a cat's tongue look how that comes to just the beautiful point and I get a dagger brush this one right here again comes to a beautiful point and with these brushes you're supposed to be able to create some different types of petals and leaves and some fun strokes I got two round brushes one in the Taclon and one in the Faux Squirrel. So I'm excited to try both and see how they act. This one is a number eight round and this one's a number 12 round, although she says that it's closer in size to a 16 round. Love the rose gold on the brushes, so pretty. And I also got this one, it's called a rigger brush or a liner brush. It's a number one rigger brush with very thin, long bristles. So I'm excited to see what kind of details I can create using this new set of brushes. It's definitely my most expensive set and I'm really excited to see how it will improve my skill. I've often said that sometimes as you're working and following along with someone, you may not know that there's an issue with some of your products. Maybe it's the paper, maybe it's the paint, and maybe in my situation, it's the brushes. So we'll find out as I use them over the next 30 days. I can't wait to see if my painting improves even more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this follow-up video. I love sharing with you what I do to help improve my own artistic skills. The really cool thing about art is that you can work really hard for a while in one area, say watercolor, and then when you go back to a different medium, like say alcohol markers, it's interesting how the things you learned in one medium watercolor can transpose and help you with your art in another medium like alcohol markers so it's never a waste of time to learn a new art skill they all build on each other and I can't wait to get better at watercolor and see how that improves my color thanks for joining us I'll have links to all these products and the books and everything in the video description in case you'd like to take a 30-day challenge and paint 50 flowers too I had so much fun and I can't wait to get started on the next book. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Don't be afraid to practice. Bye bye everyone!